Hey everyone, my name is Ryan Maxwell. In today's episode of Design to Move, we're gonna discuss Jumper's knee. This is a painful condition of the knee, most often related to activities involving repeated and forceful knee flexion and extension, such as the jumping in the name implies. Most people complain of knee pain right below the kneecap when they perform activities like squats, stairs, lunges, jumping, or from repetitive movements like cross-country skiing or running. While the cause of patella tendinopathy is multifaceted, it is generally known as a sport-related overuse or maladaptive training injury causing micro-tearing and inflammation of the patella tendon. The good news is you can recover from this issue, and the other good news is that you can help to prevent it from occurring in the first place. From a preventative stance, it's important to follow a progressive training schedule, introducing appropriate workloads for the hips and the knees in a way that ensures that these tissues can form adaptations to support the forces that you're placing on them. And this should help you avoid overloading the patella tendon and the surrounding tissues. If you have any questions on this or how to create a personalized program so you can keep from overtraining in general, reach out to admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. We offer complimentary virtual assessments and physical therapy telehealth options, and we would love to work with you. With that being said, today we're gonna to show you a suggested exercise protocol that will help you to avoid overloading the patella tendon and surrounding tissues by addressing a few of the most common biomechanical imbalances around the hips and the knees certainly not inclusive of all the issues that could be present. The first thing will be to do an assessment using a single leg decline squat. If you experience any discomfort in the knee when performing the test, you'll want to discontinue this tutorial and have it evaluated further by a trained medical professional. Remember, this isn't a substitute for medical advice. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. To complete today's program, you can use either a percussion gun, a fascial ball, and an exercise band. Start off by releasing the rectus femoris, a common overreactive and short muscle. Using the vibration gun, you're going to trace a line from the middle of the kneecap all the way up to the SIS, looking for an adhesion or a trigger point. The trigger point is a hypersensitive area that can be relaxed by applying gentle vibration. Typically 30 to 60 seconds will do. If you don't have a vibration gun, you can use a fascial ball to do the same technique, which is going to again create a neuromuscular inhibition of the muscle. By applying pressure between the ball and the femur, the muscle will relax, and once you get the sensation to subside, you can start to do a pin and stretch technique like is being demonstrated here. This should help to break open some of the fascial beds as well. Another typically overactive muscle group is the adductor group. These muscles are tucked between the quad on the front and the hamstrings on the back. We're using the gun once again to find adhesions or trigger points and isolating the area with vibration until we get a relaxation response from the muscle. It's important to note that you don't use a lot of pressure or torque into the tissue to accomplish this. Using very gentle pressure, you can isolate the sensitive spots for about 30 to 60 seconds until it desensitizes and becomes quieted. If you don't have a vibration gun, once again you can use a fascial ball to accomplish the same release or neuromuscular inhibition. Using pressure again between the femur and the ball, you can again compress the muscle until it relaxes and creates again a state of inhibition. Once that's created, you can start to rotate the leg through external rotation to help to stretch and pin the tissue through the pressure, helping to break down the collagens. You don't want the hip to move and you want to make sure that you're bringing the stretch to a momentary spongy, taut feeling, not tight. If you overstretch, the muscle will guard and it will reduce the efficacy of the technique. Now that we've released the overactive muscles, we're going to move on to the underactive. The first one we're going to target is the hamstring complex. You'll notice that we're lying prone with an exercise band lassoed around our foot. We're using an ankle cuff to get better leverage at the ankle. What you'll notice once again is that there's very little movement happening from the pelvis or the spine. We're trying to stay fixated through our back and our hips. We want to draw the focus or attention to the back of the leg and again, namely the hamstrings, both the lateral and medial. We can focus on the medials by turning the toe in or focus on the laterals by turning the toe out. A 
Another typically weak muscle are the hip abductors, namely the TFL and glute medius. This is a sideline hip abduction exercise focusing on internal femoral rotation and hip abduction. We're using the wall as an isometric pressure to focus on hip extension. We're gonna draw the leg up, making note that we don't move through the spine and try to stay focused on the hip motion without creating any accessory motion from the lumbar. You'll wanna complete two sets of 20 repetitions, again, giving yourself a minute of time in between to recover. You'll want to improve our coordination by engaging in a multi-joint integration exercise. This is going to teach us how to slowly control and load into the connective tissues of the patella so that we can improve blood flow and overall viscosity of the tissue beds at the patella itself. We're going to eccentrically control the knee flexion, resisting against the band tension, making note that our hips stay parallel to each other, stacked so that they're parallel to the floor underneath you. Make sure that your knee is tracking with the second toe and slowly eccentrically decelerate for a count of six. Our last exercise is an elevated heel single leg squat. This allows the knee to translate more forward so that we can put more tension on the connective tissues. This should help with the endurance and durability of those connective tissues as they improve. Make sure once again that you maintain your center of mass, not allowing the spine to tip to one side or the other. And again, try to get the knee down to about 60 degrees of knee flexion, the hip to about 50 degrees of hip flexion, and the ankle to about 25 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion. You'll want to complete two sets of two minutes with a minute in between to recover. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Design to Move. This session was dedicated to decreasing the likelihood of developing jumper's knee or patella tendon pain. With the changes that you make from the video, your body should be able to move more efficiently, transmit forces through the knee more efficiently, and better yet, improve your performance overall. In the case that the changes don't help, there are more individualized treatment options available like manual therapy or other modalities that a skilled physical therapist or kinesiologist may be able to assist you with. Reach out to admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com if you want more information. As always, remember your body was designed to move, so stay in motion, and we'll see you next time.